Monday the 19th of August 2024 was not a good day for Saxeford Spaceport or Rocket Factory Augsburg as the first stage of the RFA-1 underwent a hot fire test that ended with both a little more fire than originally intended and RFA's hopes of a maiden launch this year. So what caused all this? Well, a new update has provided some clues. So let's dive in and find out. Welcome to UK Space News, I'm Tom June, and before we get into this thing, if you want to stay up to date with the latest goings on in British spaceflight and beyond, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. You can also follow me on X, support the channel on Patreon, and grab some merch using the links below. Okay, let's roll. This one will involve some science, so stick around and we'll get to that. But first, RFA COO Stefan Brieschenk recently shared an update on X, having dived into the initial batch of data from that fatal test last Monday. He confirmed that this was supposed to be the first time that the RFA-1 had been hot-fired with all nine Helix engines fitted to the core stage of the rocket. It was due to run for 35 seconds and lead in to the full rocket being stacked in preparation for launch which would have included a wet dress rehearsal. Unfortunately, after the center engine started up, and a few others as well, things went pear-shaped, and a fire broke out, which quickly spread, leading to an almighty explosion that ended with the entire core stage being destroyed, having toppled 12 meters off the launch mount. Yep, it looked like a Viking dragon had come back to Shetland to reclaim a land once claimed as its own. Now, I had postulated that given the location of the position of where the fire started, that it appeared to be coming from the engine header, which sticks above the hold-down clamps at the base of the launch stool, and that that stream of perpendicular fire appeared to be coming from the propellant load line. Well, in his update, Stefan confirmed that this was pretty accurate. The cause of the incident appears to have been a fire that started within the oxygen-rich turbo pump, which quickly spread to the rest of the engine, causing the first explosive event, resulting in a fire that then took out the other engines. With the umbilical still attached and plenty of fuel within the tanks, the fire burned for quite some time, including burning through the propellant load manifold and causing a high-pressure stream of burning fuel as alluded to earlier. You know, the dragon stuff. We can see from the footage that the rocket stage eventually lost structural integrity and fell from the launch mount, being catastrophically destroyed on impact with a concrete launch pad below. Thankfully though, the rocket fell in the right direction, missing key pieces of infrastructure such as the other manifolds and fuel storage tanks. We can also see that the fire continued to burn on the launch stool for some time, with the suppression systems not able to deal with the amount of fire and its placement. Initial assessment of the launch mount is that it will need some repair work, including the rebuilding of some hold down clamps, which is perhaps going to be the most time consuming part. The launch stool is a busy place, housing the hold down clamps fuel lines, electrical systems, and that crane mounted in the corner. It seems that the flame diverter is still in good shape, however, which is to be expected, given what we saw with the water deluge system in operation and working as intended. So, the question that remains is how the fire in the oxygen turbo pump actually started. Well, there are any number of possible causes here. But if we were to take an Occam's razor approach to postulation, the simplest explanations are either a faulty seal, an overpressurization, or some debris getting into the pump. In 2014, an Antares rocket failed just after liftoff, with the root cause being identified as a defect in the machinery, which led to friction, causing a fire, explosion, and ultimate loss of the vehicle. And this all started in the turbo pump. It was also put down to design and manufacturing flaws from an engine built some 40 years prior, but RFA's Helix engines are only a few years old and have been tested to full launch duration lengths within the past 12 months, 
so it's not exactly the same thing. Yet it's possible that something has either worn down, come loose, or broken during recent tests. For those not in the know, and here comes the science bit, turbo pumps are essential for driving oxygen and propellant into the engine combustion chamber at high speed and pressure, something that gravity and tank pressure alone isn't able to achieve. RFA's Helix engines are oxygen rich staged combustion cycle engines powered by liquid oxygen and RP1 ignited by hypergolic TTEB. It's the use of RP1 here that results in the engines being oxygen rich. Where RP1 is concerned, when burned, it produces a lot of excess carbon, or soot, feeding that directly into the turbo pump, which is basically the heart of every rocket engine, would cause clogging and lead to choking of the system. Instead, in Orsk engines, it's the full flow of oxidizer that is fed through the pumps, into the pre-burner, and out to the turbo, with only some of the propellant, just enough to increase the heat and pressure in the pre-burner. However, this type of engine is very difficult to implement due to the extreme temperatures that gaseous oxygen reaches. While oxygen-rich staged combustion engines can produce higher chamber pressure and increased thrust over its fuel-rich counterparts, the trade-off is something incredibly difficult to manage. The Soviet RD-180 was an example of a successful Orsk engine utilizing RP-1, but most companies have stayed away from it due to the complexities involved. RFA, however, appeared to have a successful engine on its hands, albeit with a few niggles along the way, which is to be expected. The first successful hot fire at Saxevoord was back in May, with a further test in July before this one. On both occasions, there have been anomalies. In May, only four of the five Helix engines fitted at that time successfully ran, and in July, there was a scrub test the day before the successful one, with no reason given. We don't know yet which engine failed here, but it's possible that it was the same one which failed to light a few months ago. One of the worst possible outcomes of this investigation into the root cause of the fire would be every rocket engine designer's biggest nightmare, cavitation. In simplest terms, cavitation is a phenomenon caused in rotating machinery by the static pressure of a liquid dropping below the vapor pressure and forming bubbles or cavities. When subject to additional pressure, these cavities collapse and produce shock waves that damage and fatigue metal components, most notably the impeller blades of a turbo pump. Still, the good news is that RFA are already building another first stage of the RFA-1, which was originally planned for Flight 2, and has over 100 iterative design improvements over its deceased sibling. Plus, the second stage, Redshift OTV, fairing, and payloads are all still safe within their hangar at Saxevoord, meaning that when they return to the pad in 2025, it won't have been after having to build a whole new rocket and losing customer payloads. As Stefan said in his video message, some amazing footage was captured at great expense. But while the thrill of an explosion is good for viewers, I really do feel for both Saxevoord and RFA teams. It's been years of hard work leading up to this point, and it's always vastly disappointing when setbacks occur. Still, it's important not to get too downheartened. Keep the heads up and get back to work. RFA will absolutely be back, and of course, we'll be here to bring you all the updates along the way as usual. Perhaps High Impulse can jump up north once the dust has settled, and at least give us one launch this year. I really want to know what you think of this latest update, so drop a comment below and sound off. I also want to thank my incredible channel supporters who helped to keep me on the air. Consider becoming a supporter on Patreon, where you can check out my newest feature, the Late Night Space Cafe, where I discuss all things spaceflight and answer your questions. Click the links below and don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, enough of the shameless plugs, you should probably be getting to bed, or work, or your next video or something. I've been Tom June, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.